All right, guys, today I'm going to talk about the incredibly important role of the arms in the golf swing. They control the verticals in the golf swing. They control the speed early in the golf swing. They also control the shallowing of the golf swing. My goodness. They also control, in many respects, the sequencing of the golf swing. So you could say this one's a really important subject. Before we get started, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. There's a bell button next door. Click on that. You'll get a notification every time I release a new video. All right, guys, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about the marriage between the arms and the body. It needs to be a harmonious one. The body is responsible for the horizontals in the golf swing. I'm not talking about parallel to the ground here. I'm just talking about the body rotates, okay? It rotates around the spine, back and through here. We've got some horizontal movement. The arms like the elevator in a building, okay? They lift and lower the golf club as the body is turning. When you have a good blend of arm swing and body turn, the arms working up as the body is turning, we get into this awesome position at the top of the backswing where the arms can drop down in front of our body freely and uninhibited. I'll say that again, freely and uninhibited. That is the objective really is to get those arms up here, create some good structure, almost like holding a tray at the top of your backswing, okay? I'm not gonna talk about external rotation, abduction, and all these words that you hear when, you, when you're looking at YouTube. It gets terribly confusing, okay? But ultimately, we wanna imagine our right arm is almost in a throwing position above our right shoulder. We wanna create some angles back here. I like to call it boxing it up, okay? So if you think about it for a second, I'm not even gonna go back. I'm not gonna do my backswing right now. I'm just gonna get myself up here and try and imagine, you know, what does that powerful position feel like? Just starting up here with no backswing, okay? Just starting right here. Well, I've got an angle about 90 degrees between my rib cage and my tricep, my bicep and my forearm and my forearm and the shaft. That makes a lot of sense to me, okay? I feel like here, I've got some power. Up here somewhere, I can't even get my left arm on the golf club. Down here, I feel very jammed, almost as if I'm pinning my arms to my body. That doesn't feel very good either. We've got different golf swings. Obviously, on tour, we've got a lot of different golf swings. But generally speaking, if you can get your hands, guys, above your trail heel, create a window, a window, even if it's a little one, above your right shoulder, it's going to serve you very, very well because it's a delivery system, isn't it? At the end of the day, that's gonna allow us to deliver the club on the correct orbit. How do we do it, okay? Let's break this down a little bit. We've got three things that need to happen. The trail wrist, okay, needs to kind of move back on itself, just like this. All it means is I'm cupping the back of my right wrist here to allow the club to hinge. That's the first thing. And it happens right in here around waist high between my knee and my right hip okay that's where we want to start to hinge so here we go i'm going to go ahead and go into my backswing i'm going to start to hinge that right wrist back on itself now notice when i do that the club head has already traveled further than my body okay now why is that important a lot of golfers they don't have this setting motion they're not creating those verticals soon enough and they drag the golf club away from the golf ball at the same speed as their body. For those of you that have always collapsed at the top of the backswing, collapsed, okay, there's a reason for that. Most of you are turning your body with your arms and the club together too long, okay? And you can see if I do that, my body's going to re reach its destination too early, and my hands and arms have got no choice really but to reach their destination too late. It's what we call runoff. You've got to have some kind of reasonable sequence in your backswing. Everyone talks about the downswing sequence. No one talks about the backswing sequence. Very important to understand. So what am I looking for here? If you've watched my videos, I talk a lot about an L to L drill, a hitchhiker drill. I just feel like it's incredibly fundamental. It's a wonderful drill. And what that means is when the lead arm is parallel with the ground, guys, we want the club fully hinged into the side of our body. I'm creating an L essentially. So if, if we can get this move here, okay, right here where the butt end of the golf club's pointing down here somewhere towards the golf ball, maybe slightly inside the ball ideally, okay, and your wrists are fully hinged right in here, 
when the lead arm is parallel, all I've got to do from here, guys, my lead arm will work slightly up my chest, my right arm, my upper arm will work slightly up, and then you can see this beautiful structure at the top. I've got my golf club boxed up. I've got my window above my trail shoulder. It looks something like this. I'm going to go ahead and box it up. This is a great angle to look at the golf swing. See, my right wrist is get set back on itself here, my lead arm parallel to the ground. And then from here, look at my arms work up, 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 starting to elevate my arm. And there's the top of my backswing. So now I've got some really good structure. So great drill for working on this, okay? Momentum drill, momentum drill. So that just means that you start the club forward and then swing it back. You're giving the club head a little bit of a head start, guys, to try and avoid dragging it away at the same speed as your body. Start doing that, you're gonna to be too horizontal. This is where that club's gonna gravitate. How many of you take the club too far to the inside? A lot of that is because you're not getting that club head moving fast enough. You're not getting the club moving upside down quick enough. So start forward, okay? Then go back. Look at this right here. All of a sudden, looks starting to look pretty dynamic here, isn't it? As opposed to this. How often do we see this? That move there is dead. We've done everything we're supposed to do. We're supposed to make a good turn, right? Turn the shoulders, turn the hips. But your arms have done nothing. All right, your arms have done nothing. So I hope that helps for the backswing. Window above the trail shoulder. You've got to hinge the wrists, arm folds, upper part of the arm elevates. That gives us that awesome window. That's what we're looking for. Now, as you change direction, what we're looking to do is unpack gradually, unpack everything we did to the top. It just reverses. It reverses. Okay. When we're talking about the arms, we're going to isolate what the arms do as we change direction. If I get to the top, when I start my downswing, I'm going to start my downswing and I'm going to reverse what I did. The last thing I did on the way back with my right arm was elevate the upper arm, right? The opposite of that, of course, we're going to go ahead and get the upper part of the arm working down, all right, as the body stays back. And then from there, what we're going to start to do is we're going to start to straighten the right arm and then we start to unhinge the wrist. So all of a sudden, I've got this look right here. And again, I'm not moving my body. I'm just showing you what it looks like. So it looks like this, okay? Look at the arm. I start to unpack my arm, and then I unpack my wrist, and there is my arm swing, okay? And this is a fantastic drill, by the way. It's just to get that club turning down from the inside here. Let your arms drop, and make sure the toe of the club turned down into the ground, just like this, okay? You don't want to hit it this way with the club face pointing up. You want to turn the club face down into the ground. So that's the feeling I want all of you to have when you start your downswing. I know, crazy, crazy as this may sound, we go to the top, look at the arms. There we go, okay? So I'm starting my downswing, upper arm, lower arm, wrists. Okay, one more time. Upper arm, lower arm, wrists. On the way back, wrists, lower arm, upper arm. See a pattern here? We're just going to reverse it as we change direction. It's really that simple. So, obviously there on the way down, I've got my arm working down. I've got my wrist unhinging gradually, guys, not immediately, gradually. So what's that doing? What's the effect on the golf club? Think about it for a second. If I go ahead and unpack this, what do you see the golf club doing on its approach? It's coming down. It's shallowing. It's getting lower on its approach. For those of you that spin your way to more speed, look at this transition. Where's the golf club, guys? It's up above my head, isn't it? Look how vertical that thing is, okay? It looks like a lightning rod. So you can spin your way to more speed, try and fire your hips, okay? And look how vertical this thing is. And then what you're going to have to do right here, look, is release early. Or you can do this thing gradually. Look. Look where my arms are. Out in front of my body. Where are my hands? Out in front of my right hip. That's what I'm looking for. Right there, guys. Okay? From here, all we do is take the golf club and move it in the opposite direction at a pretty fast rate of speed. Okay? My arms start to slow down right in here. The fastest point in the golf swing of the arms is going to be 
right around here. That's where we want to create some speed and energy. There, okay? There. Then we slow the arms down, and then the club keeps going. Tremendous amount of speed when you do that. Hope that's making sense. I'm going to smack a few golf balls here. For you slicers out there, this is going to be unbelievable. This feeling of keeping your upper body back and your right hip back and getting those verticals into your golf swing. Get the verticals into your golf swing. It's going to make an enormous difference to your ball striking. I have some limited mobility. I had some back surgery years ago. My lower back in particular is pretty bad. So I have to make sure I'm swinging in a way that I can optimize my speed without creating any injuries to myself, okay? I know a lot of you are the same. You may not have had back surgeries, but I know you're tight in your backs and your hips. So if you are, pay attention. You do not need to swing, okay, like a tour player to play very, very good golf, all right? So here we go. Let's give it a whack. That felt pretty good. Let's have a look at it. All right, I've got my draw release pattern. All right, that's 169, not 183. That's not a number you want to pay attention to. So 169 yard carry with my eight iron, okay? Now, I like to hit it right around 160, 165 is kind of my number. I love to hit draws. Obviously, I like to fade the ball too, but for me, I love to hit draws because I just feel like my arms have more room to swing in the transition. My back's to the target a little bit longer. As I said, my back's a little tight. When I'm hitting cuts, I often feel like my body gets out in front of my arms a little too much. When I'm hitting draws, I feel like I've got so much more room back in here. Okay, really, really important. So if I wanted to hit it a little further, what I do is I just move my arms a little faster. So I'm going to go to the top of the back swing here. Okay, and I'm going to get this feeling. Look at me just jamming the club into the ground, guys. Okay, there it is, right there, okay? Boom, right into the ground, I'm still facing you. When my arm gets out in front of my right hip, guess what I'm gonna allow my hips to do at this point? All right, I'm gonna let them hitch a ride. They're gonna jump on board, okay? We're gonna go ahead and let those arms pull me through the golf shot. What I'm not going to do at any point is start spinning or firing my hips. I'm just going to let them get pulled through, get, let them get employed. So let's do that one more time. A little more speed, if that's possible. See if the old man can do it here. Not quite as solid. I'm going to do that one more time. 163, one more. That one felt good. That was it, right? Yes, yes, that was it. That felt so much better. All right, so that is, that's me maxing out at 172 yard carry with an eight iron. All right, and I'm moving kind of towards my seven iron, really there. I certainly, as I say, wouldn't swing, but I'm trying to demonstrate to you how easy that shouldn't look like I'm really swinging that hard, but I'm creating a lot of speed without a ton of effort. I think that's what I want you to understand. If you can get your arms down, okay, swinging freely in front of your body without pinning your arms to your body and spinning your way to more speed, you're going to be shocked at how much more club head speed you create. You didn't realize you already had it in you guys, but you've got so much tension, most of you, in your wrists, your elbows, and your shoulders, and you've been using your bodies so aggressively for so long, you've basically turned your arm speed off. So we need to turn that back on. We need to turn that arm speed back on. Hopefully, this is going to make a heck of a lot of difference to you. Don't handcuff your arms to your body, guys. Allow the club to work down before you turn the other way. Work on these drills, okay? Give yourself a little momentum drill here. This is really a great drill. This feeling right here, you can see I'm unpacking everything. I'm not releasing early. Remember what I'm starting with? I'm starting upper arm, lower arm, and then my wrist. That's the correct order. And then again, when I swing through a golf ball, guys, I'm really allowing my arms to employ my body, okay? Oh, God, I'd love to see that ball moving right to left. So much fun. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. 
If I could be at any assistance to any of you, I'm teaching people all over this crazy planet of ours now. I've got a lesson tomorrow in Bahrain. I've taught in Saudi Arabia, Thailand, Sweden, the UK, Australia, Barbados. It's been a really cool experience. So just hit me up in the description. My contact page is right there. Certainly would love to help you swing with less effort and create more speed. Find a swing that you can use for the rest of your life, guys. This jumping out of it and trying to turn your hips and your body as hard as you can. Ah, forget that. I've been down that road. It doesn't work. We'll catch you next time. Take care.